Technologies Old Dominion Open. Lisa Wagner defeated Carol Giannotti in match number three, 212 to 171. Lisa Wagner will now begin the championship match. Lane breakdown. There you see she's had uh, only one strike on lane 28. However, except for one shot, she has been in the pocket, leaving a 10 pin and a solid eight. But she seems to be carrying better on lane 27. Oh, light hit, pins are flying everywhere. Carol, G uh, Carol Norman adding a piece of tape in her ball. Now Carol chose to have Lisa start. Lisa will finish on lane 28, so I don't know if she saw Lisa's results on lane 28 or if Carol just wanted to finish first and not have the pressure put on her. Coming up nicely into the pocket. Well, we had a chance to talk to Carol Norman about being in that top seed position. Well, yeah, it feels very good. It's been 13 years since I was leading qualifier, and that was also my rookie year. So it's kind of rejuvenating, if you want to know the truth. And uh, it feels good to know that I can still do it. Uh, after a while, you begin to doubt that you can be the leading qualifier. I've been second maybe seven or eight times, or second as far as qualifying for the show. So being leading qualifier means a lot to me this week. She won the last three times that she has made it into the championship match. Nice streak to be on. Opens up beautifully for the double. Sure is, and she appears to be lined up. Same basic area she played all week. All of her work with uh, her trainers and everything seemed to have paid off. Lisa Wagner now up in frame number two. Working on a strike. She has also won the last two times in the championship match. Oh, Brooklyn, she trips out the 9-10. And one of these two players is going to win tonight. And if they do, first place prize will be $13,500. Second place, receiving $6,750. Third, fourth, and fifth have already been accounted for. Oh, Nice break. Mm -hmm. That lane has really started hooking. It really dried up over the break. And as I mentioned, the final score, match number three. Lisa Wagner defeated Carol Giannotti, 212 to 171. And again, all the players are finishing just like they qualified. I bet Carol Norman would like that to uh, continue that in that direction. Oh, and capitalizes on the Brooklyn. Very, very important. And she just threw three in a row. Now she's going to sit down and try to figure out what to do when she gets back up on lane 28. Do you think she just hit the dry a little earlier? Turned it early? I, it actually looked like she was inside of her target, so she might have hit the dry in the middle of the lane mm. a little bit sooner. I Last title, the fall of 1992 in the Brunswick Three Rivers Open. And we talked about Carol had taken off in 1994. Um, since that time, uh, she did work with the personal trainer, Debbie Sanderson, and a sports psychologist, Eric Lasser. She wants to thank them. She also did a lot of work with Fred Borden. Fred Borden being the Team USA coach, and Kim Kennedy has Carol Giannotti on the sideline. Hi, I have Carol Giannotti here with me, and Carol, it's such a great week. You bowled really well this week. Um, you'll be getting married soon. Is there, is there, how do you think that the marriage will affect your bowling and your career, and what do you intend to do with it? Um, well, I plan to bowl to the end of 1997, and then we're moving to Australia. Uh, probably bowl the fall part-time, but um, hopefully after that when I move back, um, I want to get back into international bowling. So I'm looking forward to that. Okay, now when was the last time you were home? Six months ago. Oh, it's been a while, so I'm looking forward to get home for a little break. Great. Has your family, did they come out? I know they were out for a few weeks, a, a little bit. Yeah, they had a great time. They were out for, uh, well, eight weeks. Three weeks while I was bowling, and then we traveled around for a month. They really enjoyed it, and I was glad to have them over here. Okay. Well, thanks for joining us, Carol. Back to Leila. All right. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Carol. Meanwhile, Carol Norman has gone high through the head pin, left the 3-6-10. She actually looked inside her target also. It looks like the middle of the lane dried up considerably on both lanes during the break. 
earlier in the first couple matches how wet that center of the lane was, you would have thought that it may never have dried out. That's right, exactly where she just hit now um, was going 55 feet earlier. Did they ever break out or break down during uh, the middle of the, the evening or any of that time in the late night block? They did. did. get in? Sure. A lot of the players did move in and play, particularly during qualifying, uh, not as much during match play. There you see her last title was 1993 in Rockford. She had two appearances in 1995. This is her second appearance. Finished fourth in the Storm Doubles with partner Carolyn Dorn. Oh, Lisa Wagner. Half ten. Okay, she made the adjustment for that Brooklyn. Came in a little light. Actually, half pocket. Not quite finishing hard enough. In 1988, Lisa became the first woman to reach the $100,000 plateau in earnings for a single season. Since then, three other people went around that. Robin Romeo, Anne-Marie Dugan, and Alita Sill now holds the record. And she converts the 10 pin. Still has a two pin lead. Coming up next week, we head to Huntsville, Alabama for the Rocket City Challenge held at AMF Pin Palace. And then on to Sam's Town Tunica Classic at Ocean Lanes in Ocean Springs, Mississippi. And two pin lead for Lisa Wagner early on in the match. Very close. <laughs> all right, is it all skill or is there some luck involved in this sport? Uh, a little superstition. bit of superstition. <laughs> <gasps> we have the mascots down there bowling each other, or fighting it off, I should say. Oh, my. Oh. Solid oh. seven pin. I think I'd take that little mascot and chuck him about right now. <laughs> now, we talked about her carry being better on that lane, but that was a terrible break. Notice wow. she got the ball to the right farther. There's actually still some oil out there. But watch this. Watch a four pin. Ball driving a little hard. Four pin went straight back. Two pin off the wall. Mm. Seven pin actually jumped up and sat back down. Four pin did not do its job at all. All right. Lisa converts it. Gives an extra long stare. One pin match. I told you it was going to be a great one. There's Dana Powell, the general manager here. At Denby Lanes. You know, Carol has also changed, if we can get a look, to finger inserts. And she said that that has been a huge difference. She just did it this year, and she doesn't know why she didn't do it 13 years ago, because she said she gets so much more lift and turn on the ball that she now feels she can compete even on a shootout, where before she only felt she was competitive on a grind-out type of shot. Well, she came out and was the 1982 Ebonite Rookie of the Year. You don't have to start making changes if you see success in your career early. That's probably why she mm -hmm. stayed with it. You're right. But uh, with the changes, in, and so you can get so much more out of equipment nowadays, and the grips really enhanced the equipment for her. It's also a good tip for any uh, amateur player out there that would like to go from a conventional grip ball to a fingertip ball. It, it allows them to hang on to the ball just a little bit better, gives them a more secure feeling. It does, and I usually suggest that, especially if you're just switching over. Mm -hmm. Carol Norman now shooting the 10 pin. Trails by two pins. <laughs> no problem with the 10 pin. David Morgan, the assistant general manager here at Denby Lane. And these people all worked very, very hard to make this a successful tournament, as Jeannie Nakarado had talked about earlier in her little interview. Exactly. It was, it was fantastic. Especially for summertime in this area. Bowling uh, has to slow down a little bit. All the outdoor recreation and the heat. Except it's a great way to beat the heat. Get inside. Go bowling. Get into the air conditioning. So I plan to do this weekend. Temperatures are supposed to get in the high 90s. All right, and it's heating up here. It's still normal. Strikes in the sixth frame. It's still a two-pin lead. We will have the rest of our championship match. You won't want to miss it after these messages. <laughs> 